it came out in the news this week that in New South Wales now, children under six will be banned from tackling in junior rugby league games. And kids will play without scores until they hit 12 in a move to make the game safer and more enjoyable. And that's officially come out now to all the clubs. This has been this has been placed in place in Queensland for a number of years now, I think since 2019. Um, under sixes will play tag. Under sevens will play tag until midway through the season. Um, uh, but then it's development comps until you're 13, basically. Boys, I have some severe opinions about this. I don't know who they've targeted with their questioning, with their surveying, because I spend an awful lot of time around rugby league parents, rugby league kids, and an awful lot of them. I think I've coached something like 500 kids in the last four weeks alone, or five weeks, up and down the country from as north as Mornington Island and as south as Melbourne. And I would not be lying if I said 98% of them are flabbergasted by this kind of hand down from the game. I think with tag, at under sixes and under sevens, I think there's a fundamental problem with that. If you sign up your child for boxing, you expect them to have gloves on and you expect them to fight somebody else. Well, you bring in tag, it's effect- you're effectively signing them up for another sport. It needs to be called something else. And also, if you're in boxing and you're not actually able to fight with someone and punch someone, you are either shadow boxing, you are either sparring or you're punching a punch bag. So you're not boxing. Also, with the development leagues, with no competition, basically every parent is feeding back to me. The kids knows, know who have, have won and lost. And I think what they're trying to do there is target coaches and parents rather than kids. Well, Maybe more money, more effort needs to be put in coach education programs. But the other thing is how accountable are our coaches in the game? So if they behave in a certain way, who's monitoring it and who's making them accountable and saying, no, you can't coach like that. You can't do this anymore. Uh, th- I am deadly serious about this topic, boys. I know we started off with some fun, but I'm deadly serious about this because I think I know many people that have just walked away from the game in Brisbane. We're a bit more relaxed and laid back up in Queensland so they don't sort of fight that much and um, tend to just walk away rather than embroil themselves in argument. But in New South Wales this week, I've been down there for for a few days. There is a lot of anger. I have heard two people who are quite powerful in club land already say they are talking about a rebel competition. This isn't good. I believe that they brought this news out the day before the grand final in New South Wales to swallow it up a little bit in the headlines. I think they are making a grave mistake. I think they should be offering tag options and full contact options for parents. I think they should be offering development competitions and competitive competitions for parents. I think we are neutralising our game of rugby league. Yes, I know there are mitigating circumstances. I know that there is litigation out there now and concussions and whatnot. I do really applaud the emphasis and focus in the sixes and sevens on the tackle ready program in terms of safety and tackles. I really do applaud that. However, what about somebody like me who came into the game at 13 or 14 years of age? Where's my progression into that? And we talk about resilience and, and stre- mental strength of our kids. But we are taking away the, the winning and losing dynamic in massive spades here. There's something else to be said too, boys, that, if you're tackling from age 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, the game is actually less high octane. You're not having blokes and girls who've been in the gym making themselves 10 kilos heavier and more powerful crashing into each other. You've got lower octane matches, less distance between offense and defense. It's actually a bit more of a controlled environment. Mm. I think where the game might be better placed is investing a little bit because apparently in New South Wales they're paying for every tag. Now the other thing with tags is you can break your fingers, and you can break your fingers in a certain way. It will be hard for people to understand this listening rather than watching this podcast. But the normal way to break your finger is from the side of the finger, isn't it? You crash into something, trap it in a door, whatever. With us tag, you can actually break it, and it's quite regular. You can break it at the end down into a- the hand. You get a spiral break. A spiral break. Thank you, Dr. Cheeseman. And (laughs) that, so there's still risks with that. I mean, where does this end? And I've always said this, and I bang on about this all the time. You can probably tell in my voice, I'm a little bit passionate about it. 
Too many coaches don't teach kids how to tackle because they don't know how to teach kids how to tackle. Now, that's okay. And that means some people reach out to me with help with that. But what is the game doing, apart from a Tackle Ready programme, in its coach education programmes, to teach that? What are our NRL clubs doing in the region? What is the What are the Broncos doing in Brisbane to pass down to all the kids in Brisbane that this is how you need to be tackling safely? You know, not over the ball, under the ball, blah de blah de blah not this foot, that foot, safely. This is where you put your head. This is where your shoulders should go. What are all the NRL clubs doing in their area to do that? We've got all these resources. We've got 30 players in the top squad. We've got junior players who could all go out and spend some time in the community doing this. What are we doing? And Not in- enough. And instead, we're spending money on tags in New South Wales, which will bring another set of problems. So where does this end? What are we going to do? Be playing the game on a computer or a console? Is that how Pretty we're going much. to go down the road? Is that the road we're going to go down? Simulator. Yeah. Yep. So I think... The, the other thing I heard in Sydney this week is that the consultation process was hardly thorough, which means they didn't want to hear the answers. And I think this smacks of a certain demographic of certain kids and parents that you get in any team. You get some kids in teams that don't envy the contact. And that's life. You get some parents who don't envy their kids being in the contact. Mm. That's life. But the vast majority of people who play rugby league really love the contact. When I do clinics, I get kids begging me to bring in full contact collision games. And I have to dampen their experience a little bit, particularly on the first day. And I have a good chat to the parents and say, look, we might do a bit tomorrow, but it's in a controlled environment and, and, you know, touching wood, there's been no major dramas, but you know, this is, this has been sort of rushed through, I think. And I think, we're going to have people walking away from the game. I really do. Because at sixes and sevens, you're not signing up for rugby league. You're signing up for a sport called tag. You could slow down the speed of the play, the ball, and make tackle safe, tackling safer. You can reduce the meterage. Absolutely. The referees go back. Yep. <laughs> um, and it still like looks and sounds like rugby league. 